Fallout 76's first expedition took us to the ruins of Pittsburgh, now known as the Pit, and here we encountered a new powerful and mysterious faction called the Fanatics. This new group is well disciplined and well armed, with having specific ranks within the faction, access to powerful weapons, and even power armor. They use slaves for physical labor and they are widely feared within the Pit. But who are they? How do they recruit? How did they gain power and what is their goal? Well in this video I hope to answer those questions and more as we explore the dark lore of the Fanatics. The Pit was once a major industrial center before the war, and not just for steel production, but also for the manufacturing of weapons, ammo, vehicles, power armor, and robots to support the war effort. It was a very important city in pre-war America, and because of this, Pittsburgh was a priority target for Chinese warheads. When the bombs fell, the area was completely decimated, and the radioactive fallout from the nukes mixed with the insane amounts of industrial pollution from the factories, creating an extremely hazardous environment. The city then fell into absolute chaos, with various raider gangs popping up and establishing their own districts in the city. These gangs would often wage war on one another, but they were mostly small conflicts and none of them were really viewed as major threats. They were just a ton of small gangs trying to survive in the pit. But then one day, a single person decided to try and unite the raider gangs around the city. As of right now, we don't know who this person is, and we will talk more about that later, but continuing on, it seems as if they were successful in their goal. The raider gangs were forcibly unified, becoming an extremely powerful faction in the pit. They began to form organized ranks, and started using slaves to carry out physical labor and even act as meat shields during battles. And at one point, they even hired the Hellcat mercenaries to help take control of the pit. They were used as death squads sent to annihilate any resistance in the pit. Reading a letter left by a Hellcat mercenary in the trench, we can learn more about how the fanatics used them. Survival comes first, and mercenary work is a great way to stay off the losing side. But that's not going to stop me from complaining about how these fanatics do things. They hired us a few weeks ago. Seems they need some extra guns to finish securing their hold on the pit. But this just looks like chaos and tyranny more than any type of control. They have a storm into Union bases, kill everyone in sight, and then move on to the next without so much as stopping to loot the wreckage. Last time, one of those assholes accidentally shot Hoffman in the leg during the assault. Couldn't tell friend from foe. There's been talks to leaving this place after our stint with the fanatics is done. Found in work somewhere we could actually sleep at night. Wouldn't be a bad call, but me, I prefer a known enemy, and I've known the pit all my life. So, by this time, the fanatics had been fully formed, and they had the means to hire mercenaries, began to use slave labor, and took control over most of the pit. They had become the most powerful faction in the area, and if you talk with Skippy Roach, a survivor of the pit, he will even compare the fanatics to Genghis Khan. Hell, you've got raider gangs here, right? I've heard about your blood eagles. The fanatics are something like them, but more organized. Imagine every single raider gang you've ever heard got together and decided to make like Genghis Khan. Sweep over everything. Kill anyone who won't join. And put anyone too weak to fight into forced labor camps. Everything that's not theirs they take. That's the fanatics. And be glad they're not here. Now with the background of the Fanatics covered, let's take a look at their ranks and overall organization. Now the Fanatics are somewhat similar to Caesar's Legion from Fallout New Vegas in a way. They are made up of multiple conquered raider groups, similar to how Caesar's Legion was made up of multiple conquered tribes. They both engage in slavery and they both look to conquer weaker enemies and absorb them. However, they seem to differ greatly when it comes to overall discipline. Now from terminal entries, we learn that they seem to look and act as if they are all one monolithic raider faction, however they are still somewhat somewhat unorganized and will sometimes act as independent groups during raids, even going as far to having separate warbands within the faction. One of these warbands we encounter are called the Manhunters, and they seem to specialize in raiding and assassinating high-value targets. Their brutality has made other fanatics fear them so much that they would not even attempt to touch the loot gained by these Manhunter raids. Reading a note found in the Foundry can give us more information about this. It says, The last hunt was an eventful one. We bagged two high-profile targets, a number of captives, and some loot they were hauling. Looks like food rations. Certainly a blow to the enemy. Not only will they starve, but we will eat much better than just burning the warehouse. We should target the supply route more in the future to put a quicker end to this war. This hall belongs to the Manhunters by right of conquest. We've stored it in the old slag separation room until we can move it out to headquarters. The others know who it belongs to, they won't dare touch it until we return. 
So even though they are all acting under one banner, there still seems to be some clear separation within the group. But continuing on while exploring the pit, you will come across many different ranks of fanatics. In game, we can fight fanatic chemists, conquerors, crushers, engineers, foremen, howlers, hopefuls, manhunters, pistoliers, renegades, scouts, sharpshooters, troublemakers, warmongers, and a fanatic warden. So there are a ton of different ranks and roles within the fanatics, and each is slightly unique. For example, the scouts are outfitted with protective gear to help protect them from the trench's harsh environment. And the sharpshooters specialize in long-range firearms, and can often be found overlooking fanatic camps. Now currently, it's unclear how the fanatics can move up the ranks and get into these positions, but they all seem to start off as fanatic hopefuls, and we can actually find some hopefuls locked in a cage inside of the sanctum. During the boss fight with the fanatic foreman, they will enter the area and come to his aid. They wear little armor and use weak melee weapons, so dispatching them is pretty easy. But going inside of the cage, we can find a note left by one of the hopefuls. It says, Just a few more days, at least that's what I keep telling myself. These guys may be crazy, but what other options do I have? All I gotta do is keep my head down and do what they say. The sooner the others realize that, the sooner they'll be up here too. I'm worried about my cellmates, they seem excited about joining. Who would actually want to treat other living beings like this? Just a few more days and maybe I'll be able to help the others. So it sounds like some people have no choice but to join the fanatics, like the person who wrote this note. And some people actually really want to become a fanatic and they fully embrace the torturing and the killing. And speaking of torturing, this is a favorite tactic among the fanatics to force others into their ranks or to become slaves. The fanatics actually have a dedicated group tasked with the torturing of prisoners. They are called the Harrowers. And they are described as being the worst of humanity by Danilo. These harrowers can be found in torture chambers all around the sanctum, often next to bodies found in horrible conditions. Now that we have an understanding of their internal organization, let's talk about their goals. Currently, they are waging a brutal war with the Union. This started as minor territorial disputes, but it quickly grew to an all-out war, with the fanatics capturing multiple Union strongholds such as the Sanctum, their food stores, and the Foundry. They currently have the Union pushed all the way back into a small fortified area that they now use as their HQ. This war is sort of turned into a guerrilla war, with small skirmishes in the streets, assassination attempts, and even special missions behind enemy lines to blow up objectives and free slaves. This war is extremely costly for both sides and the fanatics want to destroy the Union and conquer the pit. So to speed up the war, the fanatics have started developing chemical weapons using the foundry. Reading this chemist's note will give us more information on this. It says, The boss wants us mixing day and night, no rest. We'll turn those Union rabbits into paste with the weapons we make here. And if that's not reward enough, the bonus is two servants from the pens, your pick. As for the kill counts, you'll get credit for every bunny our soldiers poach with your weapon. That's the sweetest deal in the pit, so make sure you mix your chems right. One wrong dose and the whole operation goes up in toxic choking smoke, and you with it. It is at this point that we, the players, come into the story. We have quest objectives to stop this chemical warfare and to sabotage the foundry, to free Union slaves and to kill manhunters and so on. So as of right now, the Union is starting to turn the tide of the war with our help. Now there could always be future updates that have us possibly exploring a whole new pit mission with new characters, quests, and lore to discover, and we could also possibly see who that mysterious faction leader is, because as of right now, we still do not know who the fanatics leader is. But speaking of the fanatic leader, let's quickly go over some theories. While talking with Hex, the union leader, she has this to say about the fanatic's leadership. Well, that's the funny thing. We know they have one. At least they say they do. But we have no idea who they really are. Nobody does. I'm not even sure the people at the top know who really runs the show. I have to admit, it's savvy of them. You'd better believe we'd be hunting their leaders down if we knew who the hell they were. They do the same to me. So based on this, I've come up with a few theories. Number one, there is no fanatic leader. It's entirely possible that this mysterious figure that unified each raider faction is just a myth and it was made up by the leaders of each gang to unify and control their populations while gaining security, resources, and power. Number two, the leader is a pre-war business owner. This one is kind of out there, but hear me out. The Fallout series loves doing things like this, where for the most part, the pre-war companies were all very shady and anti-union. So I think it would make perfect sense if the leader of this faction was a person who owned a massive pre-war business in the pit and used their money, resources, and knowledge to unify the raider gangs to fight against the union. It would be a clever little thing, and there is actually some evidence for this. 
First off, they were able to pay the Hellcat mercenaries to help out in the war, and I assume that would be extremely expensive because these Hellcats seem to be more than just a normal mercenary group. They have great gear and training and you can actually find the Hellcat contract in game. This contract is very well written, with the Fanatic leadership being listed as Party B, and it all just feels very corporate. Also, Abroxodyne Chemical, the company behind the Abroxo Cleaner, has ties to the pit. From multiple terminal entries and notes, we find that the Abroxo waste was causing some issues with the Pittsburgh Railroad Union. It was making its members sick while disposing of its waste, and eventually, the Railroad Union actually began to refuse transporting the byproducts, forcing Abroxodyne Chemical to start storing it within their own warehouse. After a while, they began to dump it illegally, making some people people within the company extremely angry. So there were already some pre-war issues in the pit between a union and this major company, and I could totally see it being a possibility where the post-war company owners are still waging war on the union. But again, this is all just a theory, and there is a chance we will never learn who this mysterious leader is or if they even exist. However, moving on, lastly, let's talk about the future of the Fanatics. Fallout 76 is set around 170 years before the events of Fallout 3, so if we take a look at the pit in Fallout 3, it's still run by an organized raider gang who still uses slavery and they control most of the city. But this raider gang is not the fanatics. This new one is run by an ex-Brotherhood member named Asher. When the Brotherhood was traveling to the capital wasteland, they came across the pit, and they found that the city was full of raiders and slaves. The Brotherhood then ordered a scourge of the city, where in one night the Brotherhood went through the city, destroying anything that put up a fight. By the end of it, the original raider force occupying the city was completely destroyed, and the Brotherhood saved as many children as they could, or at least the ones not yet mutated by the city's harsh environment. This event was known as the Scourge. The Brotherhood only had one casualty during this battle, and that was Asher. He was buried in rubble during a fight and presumed dead on the spot and just left behind. He then would go on to take control of the pit and lead it into the events of Fallout 3. So in the end, the Fanatics will end up losing control of the pit and their army will not last. Now it's unclear if the Fanatics are around at the time of the Great Scourge because there is no mention of the Fanatic name in Fallout 3. They only mention how horrible the occupying gang was and the existence of torture squads. So there is a possibility that they did survive up until that point, but as of right now we don't know for sure. The Fanatics are a neat faction, and it's always great to see some new lore added into the Fallout universe. Hopefully in the future we can get some more updates around the pit to further explore this faction and the pit as a whole, but as of right now I hope that this video gave you a better understanding of the Fanatics in the pit. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you like videos like this, then please do consider subscribing as I plan to cover more Dark Lore within the Fallout universe. And I already do have a few Dark Lore videos that you can check out right now. I will have them linked in the description down below. Also, a huge shout out to Follower Toshi for voicing that Hellcat Mercenary. He has a great channel, and I highly recommend checking him out as well. But again, that is pretty much going to be it for this video, so I would like to say thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of the channel members, Slappy Sauce, Cookie Monster, Fallout Fan 76, Robert Kennard, Anxiety Ranger, Esdeath93, Mazader, King Kittens, Omniprotus, Terry Lockridge, Dalton Murphy, Victrix, Argent Deer, Shaky Hands Workshop, Axel, Kevin W, Anna S, Fallout McFly, Network Gate, Goldie, Wandering Wastelander, Lanthar, Captain Awesome, Citizen Girl, Heather Henderson, Patrick Ruta, 23 Ice Fire, Jay Smith, Bowser Double Frank, Theodore, Digital Aardvark, Christy Mellon Schwitz, thank you guys so much, I love you guys, and have a great day.